Okay. Tonight we're studying Genesis 25 through 27. Last week we uh, talked about Abraham and Isaac and, uh, and, and Sarah. And then um, we had Jacob was born. Or was he born? I'll go from, <laughs> was he born? He was born. We're going to start here with uh, Abraham. Uh, and this isn't something that's very well known. I didn't really realize it. But he had taken another wife after Sarah. And her name was Keturah. K-E-T-U-R-A-H. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right at the beginning of chapter 25. So, um, but I'll read uh, the first few verses. Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimron, Jokshan, Madon, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites, the Latushites, the Lumanites. Lumites. The sons of Midian were Epa, Ephor, Hanok, Abida, and Eldal. All these were descendants of Keturah. I love pronouncing these names. <clears throat> Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Mashpilah near Mamre in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite, which is the field that he had bought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. And after Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Bir Lahe Roy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it wasn't you know anything said about her except just that one verse basically or that one little bit so um he probably she had um six kids or six sons so he probably had taken her as a wife while a while sarah was still alive she was just another um and she was a maid servant or whatever so she wouldn't have had the same uh, status as sarah so therefore she didn't get or her kids didn't get anything above, you know, what Ishmael was going to get. <coughs> but, um, and then, of course, in that way, everything, because Isaac was still considered his son of promise, because that was his son with Sarah, his wife, and so everything was going to go to Isaac, except he at least did offer uh, gifts and everything while he was still alive. He basically willed everything to Isaac, but while he was still alive, he gave gifts to his uh, maidservants or his other wives, concubines, and then their children. But then he sent them away. So, um, probably one reason it may not have mentioned her much is because there was no drama. <laughs> you know, because they talked about Hagar and all the drama that existed with Ishmael and everything, but so there just must not have been a whole lot worthy of mentioning. And plus, they weren't like major players in the history to follow or anything. So there was like no really reason to talk about them very much. Um, Abraham, and I gave y'all a blank already. Abraham gave all of his inheritance to Isaac as his child of promise. And when Abraham died, Ishmael was, uh, or Isaac was 75, and Ishmael was 89. But, uh, and then they buried him. You know, last time we were talking about the land that he bought and then the cave that he bought so that he could bury Sarah in it. So it was basically a purchase for the future, their land, and for burial in that cave. And it also indicates you don't get a whole lot of mention about um, Isaac and Ishmael ever since that split early on <clears throat> but apparently they had reconciled at some point because they uh, together buried Abraham you know and everything and were able to make those arrangements and grieve together I guess whenever he died and then uh, continues <clears throat> Ishmael's sons this is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Ishmael 
whom Sarah's slave Hagar the Egyptian bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in the order of their birth. I'm tempted not to even read them. <laughs> Nabioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Abdil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Nafish, and Kedemah. <laughs> these were the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers according to their settlements and camps. Ishmael lived 137 years. He breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area of from Havilar or Hav Havilah to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt, as you go towards Asher. So as you go toward Asher, it's right there on the border, eastern border of Egypt. And they lived in hostility towards all the tribes related to them. So this is talking about Ishmael, and they, they lived... Uh, in hostility towards all the other tribes, which they still do. You know, which Israel is one of the main ones that they're hostile towards. And then here's another blank. <clears throat> all 12 of Ishmael's sons became tribal leaders as Jacob's 12 sons did. However, Jacob's were, you know, he's of the lineage of Abraham and of Isaac. And so, uh, He's actually the ancestor of Jesus. So, um, and then on verse 19 on, it says, This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of, a of, Isaac, <laughs> of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, Aramean from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. And you remember um, Sarah was barren also for a long time. <clears throat> the Lord answered his prayer and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. The babies, it says, jostled each other within her. And she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other. And the older, uh, the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb, and the first one to come out was red, and his whole body, <coughs> excuse me, was like a hairy garment. So they I named him. It. His whole body was like a hairy garment. He had a lot of hair <laughs> when he was born. So they named him Esau, which means hairy. And after this. His brother came out and with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. And Isaac was 60, year old, 60 years old when Reba, <laughs> I can't talk, Rebecca gave birth to them. So, uh, yeah. And it, it's funny, you know, because he says, uh, well, it's, I'm not going to say that yet because it's not here yet. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Um, of course, you know, they use strong words, you know, that in the translation probably, or come across stronger in the translation because that didn't mean that uh, one of them, that Isaac only loved Esau and she only loved Jacob, you know, but they just favored, I think, you know, had a favorite son, you know, because uh, Jacob stayed at home with his mom in the tents and everything, so they were like closer, and then uh, Esau was the rugged outdoorsman and stuff, you know, and his dad could relate to that more, and so he was closer to, to Esau. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. And that apparently uh, Edom means red. He wanted some of the red stew. And that says that's why he was also called Edom. Red. Edom no. means red. Yeah. So Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. And Esau's like, Look, I'm about to die. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. 
So Esau despised his birthright, which doesn't mean that he hated his birthright. It doesn't despise wouldn't be what we would say. He just didn't give up. He didn't care about his birthright, you know, especially not at that moment because he thought he was starving to death, you know. And I, I think maybe um, he, maybe he didn't really think he was serious, <laughs> you know. Some of your birthright, oh whatever, just give me some stew, you know. And so he might not have really even taken him that seriously, but um, but you know, going back to the beginning, when they jostled mm -hmm. within uh, Rebecca's womb. And uh, when she asked him why that was happening, they were already basically at odds, at odds with each other before they were even born, which was a foreshadowing of what was to come in their lives and also uh, the future all the way till the end of time. And then uh, here's a blank. Just as Sarah had been barren and couldn't have children, so was Rebecca. Oh, you already killed it in. Uh, <clears throat> so... You know, so Isaac had intervened uh, with God for her and uh, asked him to let her have a child. And then she ended up having twins, Jacob and Esau. And there was like a 20-year gap from the time that they got married till she did have the twins. So there was a long time, you know, that she was barren. And then the birthright, you know, he sold his, or gave him his birthright, which the birthright goes to the firstborn son, which means that uh, they have like a more honorable position because they're firstborn and they uh, they get like of the estate they like get the best land I mean you know they like get the all the best of everything and um, they whenever they do their inheritance the firstborn gets like a double portion of what the rest of the kids would you know so rather than because everybody else would get a single portion and then they get double so there's a lot of benefits that came from the birthright being the firstborn and it also included a, uh, a spiritual blessing or you know the, so um, and then but <clears throat> but it had also been um, disclosed to Rebecca that the older would serve the younger which you know wouldn't have made any sense at the time but then when he gets his birthright and all that stuff, then it turns out because the others have to uh, basically be subservient, have extra respect for the older one. So, um, the, and then this is a blank. The son of, with the birthright normally would be given preferential treatment. <laughs> I was like, I wonder what he wrote there because I hadn't said it yet. <laughs> So he also, the firstborn, would assume more responsibility, you know, as the firstborn. And um, uh, occasionally, and which happens more than just right here, the firstborn would fall out of favor or something with the family, with the father, and they would end up giving the birthright to somebody else. But, uh, and we'll come to those later. But, uh, and the birthright should have been Esau's because he was born first and God allowed him to be born first. You know, so that he just wasn't the one chosen for that. The um, There was material and spiritual value, but Esau just didn't grasp all of that on the birthright. And um, he didn't grasp everything that had been promised because it wasn't promised to him, you know, specifically. And it didn't have any real importance to him until later, you know, during when everything else happened. So... Um, like I said, at the time, he's probably just like, whatever, I'm starving to death. Let me have some stew. So in chapter 26, there was a there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. That's again a prophecy of the Messiah in the future. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. So Isaac didn't go to Egypt. He stayed in Gerar. 
So, you know, God reemphasizes to Isaac all the promises that he had made to Abraham uh, previously and again states that through his offspring, all nations will be blessed, talking about the Messiah, then they would all come through his bloodline. Uh, when the men of that place asked him about his wife, now this is where he is with Abimelech and all them, he says, she's my sister, because he was afraid to say she's my wife. He thought the men of this might, uh, the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she's beautiful. You know, there was a very similar story with Abraham prior to that, also with an Abimelech. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech <laughs> thought, wait a minute, <laughs> you said she was your sister. <laughs> so Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? And Isaac answered him, because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might well have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, and he said, anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. So he wasn't real happy with him because of the position that they could have been put in, you know, by everybody thinking she was his sister. Um, but, it, and this is a blank, in times of severe famine, it was normal for people to go down to Egypt. I guess Egypt uh, back then was kind of a land of plenty, you know, and where that people could go when they were uh, down and out and needed food and stuff. But God told Isaac not to go there. You know, he had told him to stay where he was. Then he forced Isaac to trust his ability to provide for him rather than him going somewhere else to get provision. And that's what everybody else was doing. So, and then this is another blank. I, my blanks are all close together. Abimelech was not a personal name. It was a Philistine dynastic title. So, because you remember, um, Abraham was also talking to an Abimelech. You know, in the same situation, that's where he was when he was talking about telling him uh, Sarah was his sister. You know, and so, um, different Abimelech further down the line, just a dynastic title. And then... Uh, Isaac lied to him, and Isaac is funny because Isaac trusted God enough to stay where he was and not go to Egypt, but he didn't trust him enough to tell the truth about, sorry, the well, truth about uh, Rebecca being his wife. So Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines dug a, or filled in, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So... You know, God had blessed Abraham and given him all those flocks and all the land and, you know, all the things back uh, in his day. And he was doing the same thing with Isaac. He was blessing him, you know, with abundance and everything and um, all his flock and all this kind of stuff. And so then the Philistines were jealous of him, but they were also feeling threatened by him. You know, because later on you see in Egypt how they feel threatened by the Israelites and everything because they might become too powerful for him or whatever, well, these people were concerned about Isaac, you know, and him through all of his things becoming too much for them. So they wanted him to leave. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug at the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Esek because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also, and he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. And he named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. 
Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord, and there he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. So, the, I don't think I gave you blanks for that, because the, the well named Ethek meant quarrel, so they were quarreling over it, and then the word Sitna for the second well meant uh, hostility, because they were bickering over that well. And then when they finally got to the well that they could share, and he called it Rehoboth, that meant plenty of room or open space. So he named them all according to the situation. So um, Isaac wasn't wanting to quarrel with them over it. You know, so he just, okay, well, if this is yours, well, then we'll move over and we'll dig another one. You know, so he just kept going until they uh, got one that they could all agree on. So... Um, <laughs> And then, you know, once they finally found one that they could all agree on, well, then the Philistines left them alone about it, and then they were able to go on. So, um, and then, again, God confirms his Abrahamic covenant with Isaac and assures him that he doesn't need to be afraid because he's with him. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ahuzath, his personal advisor, and Phicol, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, why have you come to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? You know, I mean, why did he come back? <laughs> come to him. And they answered, we saw clearly that the Lord is with you. So he said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm, just as we did not harm you but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they went away peacefully. That day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They had dug another one. They had found water, and he called it Sheba. And to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. So... Um, Abimelech, you know, they realize that God is with Isaac and, you know, they don't want to make an enemy out of him uh, because he is favored by God and so blessed by God and and um, has been blessed with so much abundance and all that. They don't want to make an enemy out of him. So they go to him, you know, to make sure that they have peace with him and that they can all get along. So they make a, an oath or a covenant with each other to be able to have a peaceful relationship. And then, uh, this is the blank. It was normal to have bickering over ownership of wells because water was so vital. You know, the... And if it was anything then like it is now, all dry and barren, you know, you'd have to dig wells to be able to have any kind of water. So, people go down ten times as Egypt. <clears throat> so, and then after, you know, Jacob had already taken Esau's birthright. So then when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and also Basemoth, daughter of Elon the Hittite. It looks like base math. <laughs> and they were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. So uh, Esau takes a wife, but he takes a Hittite wife, which you remember Abraham didn't want Isaac to take a wife from the Hittites. He wanted him to have one from their own people. And, uh, but Esau did not do that. He found a wife among the people. And another um, indication of his choice being poor was the fact that they caused grief for Rebecca, you know, um, the wives. And so uh, it said it, it made their lives, uh, or made Isaac and Rebecca bitter. And then when Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessing before I die. I, so there's a birthright and then there's a blessing. So Isaac's health, this is a blank, Isaac's health had declined and knew his death was probably near. So he decided it was time to give his blessing to Esau as his eldest son. Did you already fill in the blank? 
-hmm. Now, Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. She's eavesdropping. And when Esau left for the open country to hunt game and, pa and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to your flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, But my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? It would appear I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. And his mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebecca took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. Then she handed her son, Jacob, the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father. Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Because, you know, he can't see. And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may... Give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau, he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him, and when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, oh, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him, and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Then he said to him, My father, please sit up and eat some of my game, so that you may give me your blessing. His father asked, uh, Isaac asked him, Who are you? I am your son, he answered, your firstborn Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came, and I blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. When Esau, Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? This is the second time he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright, and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, Haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him lord over you, and have made all his relatives his servants, and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness and away from the dew of heaven. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, restless, <laughs> restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told what her older son Esau had said, she sent for her younger son Jacob and said to him, Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? 
Then Rebecca said to Isaac, I am disgusted with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land and from the Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. So, and this is a blank. Uh, Rebecca was listening in on Isaac's conversation with Esau. So Rebecca and Jacob quickly cooked up a plan. I was trying to be clever. <laughs> to get Isaac's blessing before Esau could get it. Um, by the time Esau got there with the stew that he had made, of course, Isaac had already given uh, his to him and had already gotten his uh, blessing. So, um, and then of course, once Esau returned and found all that, he was really ticked off. And I think then really realized what all he was losing out on. And then Jacob, um, Esau was so angry that he wanted to kill him. And he had to, and Jacob had to run for his life. And then uh, this is a blank. Although the name Jacob relates to his grabbing, initially relates to him grabbing of his brother's heel in the moon, in the, in the womb, not the moon. It also means uh, cheater or deceiver. You know, later God changes his name to Israel, but initially, that's why his name was. But um. And then Esau is the father of the Edomites. That's also there. Because uh, Esau ended up heading out there and staying in the land. Uh, taking control of an area called Seir on the Jordan River, or east of the Jordan River. And then they, name her, they name related it. They later named it <laughs> Edom. <laughs> uh, and the, just uh, on a side note, the Herods in the New Testament, like when Jesus was born and stuff, um, were Edomites. So uh, one of them, one of the Herods that was an Edomite, killed the Jewish babies in an attempt to kill Jesus, the Messiah. And then it, uh, a Herod murdered John the Baptist. And then uh, a Herod killed James, the brother of John. So and so and they are of the Arabs. And so the struggle between the Israelis and the Arabs today is just a continuation of the same one that was going on way back in Genesis. And then Rebecca makes the comment about how disgusted she is living because of the Hittite women, uh, likely because of all the grief that she was receiving from Esau's wives. Anyway, so, and that's the name of that tune. <laughs> um, so we'll pray. Um, Mary was asking me to pray for uh, her family, and there's a friend that she knows that... Uh, has had a lot of issues with diabetes and his feet and everything and they're having to do some kind of surgery on his feet and everything and to pray for her family so uh, anything that anybody else needs prayer for you good <laughs> Lauren yeah. you need prayer for anything are you good hey you good Lord, we just thank you for this time that we have together to study your word and to learn more about you and uh, in our history. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for the ones that are here tonight, God. And I lift up uh, Mary. She wasn't able to come tonight. I lift her up to you. Lift her family up to you and um, all the issues that, um, that they may have, God. We just pray for everything. And just pray for wisdom for her, and we just pray for good health for all of them. And we lift up Aaron to you, the problems that he's having with his health and his feet and everything, God, that you would just touch him and strengthen him. And we pray for healing, Lord, in his body. And we just thank you for each and every one and pray that they uh, all make it home safely. And we just pray for your divine protection over each and every one and pray for blessings over each and every one and we just thank you lord we thank you for the ones that are watching and we just pray for them god for uh good health and, and healing and just all the things lord and blessings on them too lord and we just thank you and in jesus name we pray amen and thank you all for joining us here and we'll see you soon